So uh, I, I will run through, and uh, if the screen, as it's the end of the day, does get too tired, um, I'll do my very best to describe to you. Um, what, what I wanted to do was to just talk a little bit about some of the principles behind our work, and, and uh, the, the title there of um, Materials as an Ignition Point actually came from a, from a film that we made last year, but it was quite a nice, snappy uh, intro, and it does, does tackle one of the key um, principles that we approach our work with, which is that we're, we like to be material-led and we think that materials are uh, at the starting point for much of the work that we do. And of course, the, our team's um, uh, heritage is, is here in Finland and Tapio Verkula, um, I think, is the, the, the principle when he said that all materials have an unwritten law and that the designer must, must uh, become in harmony with those laws and understand those laws is a, a, a key principle for us. Verkula was working in wood and ceramics and glass, and uh, we work on a mass industrial scale, but the principle is, is much the same. And this is the approach that we take as we're, as we're developing um, our devices to understand the materials that we're working with. We uh, strive for a, a very pure design language, and of course that comes with this, this idea of less is, less is better. Uh, we take away as much complication uh, as possible and when you, whenever you do that, it means that everything that, that you uh, uh, leave behind needs to be as perfect as it possibly can be. We can reduce clutter, and that's reflected in the user interface of the, of, of the Windows environment. So it's very clean and very pure, and we get there by understanding the process behind our manufacture. We think about it as designing from the inside out. So whilst as a design team we spend a, a lot of time doing research in, in design trends and in ethnography, understanding how people use our devices. We, we're equally inspired by production facilities uh, and factories and the processes by which materials are, are manipulated. And we begin uh, the process of designing a, a product by working very, very closely with the engineers who are developing the inside parts because we, we've learned that we can only really end up with a very beautiful exterior if we're starting on the inside, understanding how all of those components are being placed, what that in impact that will have on the, the shape of the outside, what impact that will have on all of the parts that, um, that protrude through from the inside to the outside. This kind of drives us towards some uh, fairly extreme forms of, uh, of product making. Uh, this particular part here is the body of the Lumia 800. Um, it's quite a complex injection molded part, made of the um, polycarbonate part. There were a lot of moving parts in the mold because it's, it's a shape that returns on itself. And so in order to be able to extract it from the mold, it's have a, quite a lot of moving parts. And that meant that the, there was a, a blemish on the outside where the injection point came in, that, um, a, a defect that, that, that's formed by all molding. And um, so we created a secondary process using a CNC um, machine that could drop in, and that cut out this lozenge shape. The lozenge shape became the camera detail and a piece of steel that carried the logo. So actually, in solving that problem, we introduced a, a rich material and a beautiful detail. And we did that by using machines that were uh, in, engineered to be cutting metal and, and adapting them so that they could work with, with polycarbonate. And with this approach to, to building our devices, we need to make sure that every little detail is as perfect as it, as it can be. And getting the, the, the AV headphone jack in exactly the right place, getting the little door there for the SIM card, these things can only be done if we're working very, very closely with the people who are engineering the electronics and the circuitry on the inside. <clears throat> Now, when it comes to being material-led, one of the things that we've, uh, we've pioneered was the use of uh, what we call inherent color polycarbonate. And that means that we're not taking plastic and then painting over the top of it. Actually, we're using pigmentation techniques in the resin itself to be able to apply the color um, as the material. So the, the, the material is the color. And again here, Whilst we're influenced uh, quite a lot and we, we pay a lot of attention to, um, to color trends and the, the way that color is, uh, is understood and, and received by consumers all over the world, 
Our color palette is also heavily influenced by material science and the work with pigmentation of the actual resin itself. So it becomes a very pure, um, quite uh, beautiful way of working. It's also very practical. It means that if you scratch your device, you're not scratching through the paint, and it wears very, very beautifully, and it lasts uh, um, uh, uh, a, a lot longer as a result. And then also, whilst we're pursuing a, a, an approach of purity and reduction, it's not about becoming minimal. We want the devices to be very rich. And again, there, it's, it's the manipulation of the materials and understanding these materials that allows us to do that. This is a technique that we've used um, to do a two-shot molding. On the outside, we have this completely transparent layer of, of plastic. And on the inside, a very, very vivid color on the inner layer. And the outer layer, you can see in the corner here, as an uneven wall thickness, which again is, is um, kind of against the, the, the rules when it comes to molding with, with polycarbonate. Um, it's, the, it's the thing that engineers usually try and avoid doing. Um, but we thought that here it gave us a kind of lens effect, and we mocked this up in early prototypes and models, and it, it has a really beautiful effect on really exaggerating the color, and these came in quite a wide range of colors. So after a lot of effort, and work in, in the factory, working with the production facilities, we were able to resolve the shrinkage issues around, around this wall thickness and, and produce this effect. And our work is also about working with, uh, with pretty advanced technology. This exploded diagram is um, from the Lumia 900. And there, it, we used a, a image stabilization, which is actually micro movements of the lens itself. So there's a glass lens in there, and uh, that's moving around to counteract the movement of your hand and stabilize the image. Pretty sophisticated thing to pack inside uh, a, a cell phone. And again, the purpose behind that and the, the, the driver that leads us to it is identifying a, a need. People take a lot of pictures uh, with their phones, and they tend to do that often in low light conditions. And we understand that it's a pain point for people. Uh, low light condition images often uh, are quite disappointing results. And so we worked on engineering a solution and then designing that into an overall experience. <clears throat> Similarly, this is a wireless charger. We've been uh, producing uh, wireless chargers and wireless charging enabled devices for quite some time. This new one has a, a NFC near field communication capability on it. So there's actually a data connection between this and my phone. When my phone reaches um, a 20% of its battery charge, this will start to glow, and the, the glowing will pulse, and it tells me that I need to just put my phone down onto that pad and it will start charging. Similarly, when it's finished charging, the, 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 um, the light will start to pulse again to let me know. And here, uh, a range of speakers. I can be going home listening to some music from my phone on my headset. When I get home, I pull the headset out. Just by tapping the phone on the speaker, again, it ma makes the connection, and, and the, uh, the, the music will come out of, of the loudspeaker. So th that's, again, quite sophisticated electronics going on behind there, using near-field communication to do the Bluetooth handshaking and make that pairing. As, as a use case, all you do is literally touch, and it works, which is very delightful. Um, these devices also have a, a base resonance. So you put them down on a hard surface. Actually, you will use that surface to create the low frequency sounds. So you get a, a much bigger effect from a very small speaker. And as you can see in the color range there, the same color range that we're seeing in the rest of the portfolio, the rest of the devices. So it all starts to feel as at one continuous family uh, of objects. And we, we, all of the learnings and the material science that we've put in at the front end actually finds itself being uh, uh, applied in many different areas. So on my last slide, we do, of course, many, many different devices. The, the one at the top there is a, it sells for around $15, and they go up to around $600. So a, a broad range of challenges for us as a design team to be able to adapt to. Oftentimes, we learn things. The uh, um, two-shot molding that we first used here has been used again in a different way here, uh, and we improved it further uh, in this device over here. So every time we make a device, we aim to be learning and improving it. We do another, uh, another phone again, and it's an opportunity actually to, to do the same thing even better and take on the, the, the learnings from the last time. Each one has a story behind it and a, a unique challenge. Uh, and, and overall, we aim that they all feel like part of a consistent story and a strong bound message and, and feel like they, they belong as part of a family. Thanks very much. <laughs>